Hi friends, in our today's session, we are going to start with our new chapter that is design of spindles and spindle supports. This is Fezan Kagri and I welcome you all to our lecture series of machine tool design. So let's begin. Now, first of all, we are going to understand that what are the functions and requirements of spindle units and spindle. Okay, so the first, let us see the functions. The spindle unit of a machine tool performs following three main functions. First is centering the workpiece. As we know that spindle unit is purposely used to center the workpiece. Okay, uh, and axis has to be kept uh, steady. Okay, the motion should not be there. Uh, high motion, that is vibration, should not be there for that. Tail stroke is also used to support work. So, example in case of a lathe, turrets, boring machines, etc., or the cutting tool, as in drilling and milling machines. So, in all these machines, centering the workpiece is a major function performed by spindle units. Okay. Next is clamping the workpiece or a cutting tool, as uh, as the case may be, such that workpiece or a cutting tool is reliably held in a position during a machining operation. So as you know that various clamping devices are mounted within a spindle. Spindle is basically hollow. If you have if you have seen uh, carefully and during your uh, manufacturing process subject in a workshop then you would have observed that spindle is hollow and within the spindle we are going to place various centers that even chucks are mounted on a spindle right uh, various devices other are mandrills right mandrills are used for holding the hollow workpiece right so clamping the workpiece again is a major function uh, performed by our spindle units and even a uh, cutting tools are sometimes mounted within a spindle okay so for that it is written that workpiece or a cutting tool is reliably held in a position during our machining operation third and major function is imparting the motion so which motion so you would say mechanical power that is our rotary motion example in case of a lathe machines or a rotary plus translatory motion in case of a drilling machines to the cutting tool or workpiece right so two motions are provided remember first is rotary motion second would be a translatory motions for, 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 for specifically in case of a drilling machines that is vertical drilling machines are used we know that transferring motions is also provided uh, to the work uh, to the machine tool bed right so again it is done by means of a spindle unit okay guys now these are the major functions which we need to determine and it is even asked in your exam so remember these three functions now let us proceed and see the requirements of the spindle unit the first major requirement is that spindle should rotate with a high degree of accuracy. The accuracy of rotation is determined by the radial and axial runout of a spindle node. You know, you have seen the spindle nodes. And this must not exceed a certain permissible values which are specified depending on the required machining accuracy. The rotational accuracy is influenced maximum by the stiffness and accuracy of a spindle bearings that is spindle supports particularly the located at the front end so this is the first requirement that high degree of accuracy should be provided when a spindle is going to rotate and specifically this accuracy is determined by two cases that is radial and axial runout of a spindle nose and it should not exceed the permissible values so this we need to determine uh, this we need to remember now second important requirement is Spindle unit must have high static stiffness. So as we know the static stiffness is a resistance to deformation when the machine is not in operation. That is when, it, when a machine is under static load, static stationary load. For example, weight of a carriage or weight of a other devices that is for example weight of gears right on the output shaft spindle is mounted as we know that is gearbox output shaft. So weight of a gearbox or uh, sorry weight of a gears all these are going to exert some static load so spindle must have a spindle units must have a resistance to such type of static load the stiffness of a unit is made up of a stiffness of the spindle unit proper and the spindle bearings 
Machining activity is influenced by bending, axial as well as the torsional stiffness. So what are the parameters which is going to uh, affect the machining accuracy? So bending, stiffness, axial stiffness as well as the torsional stiffness should be high. Okay, bending force, that is bending force, axial force and torsional force that is a twisting moment is going to influence the accuracy. So in that case, deform resistance should resistance to this type of forces should be high that is we would say stiffness should be much higher next point is the spindle unit must have high dynamic stiffness and damping proper dynamic stability of a spindle unit adversely affects the dynamic behavior of a machine tool as a whole so what is our dynamic stiffness we know that is uh, the, st uh, the stiffness which is required the resistance to deformation which is required when a machine is in operation that is when a spindle is going to rotate so obviously vibrations and cutting forces are going to affect that is also inertia force will uh, occur right so these all going to contribute uh, to the dynamic uh, we would say dynamic forces so high dynamic stiffness is a must and similarly damping we would say is a resistance to vibration right it is going to absorb the jerk Right, we have used even dampers in a vibrate, vibratory system. You all know vibratory system in which there is a spring, right, and a damper which is provided and a weight is going to hang from a fixed support, right. So in that damping is going to absorb the vibration and damping coefficient you also know. So higher is a damping coefficient, so higher would be the damping provided. That is a damping force is higher. Now the poor dynamic stability will result in a poor surface finish and loss of productivity due to restrictions on a limiting undeformed width of cut. Okay, so most important is that it must be provided with a high dynamic stiffness and damping. Okay, next important point that is fourth one is the matting surfaces that are liable to wear. That is it going the surface which are going to get wear off. The, it is going to remove or wear and tear is going to occur so it should restrict it will restrict the life of a spindle unit okay so what we need to do so these surfaces such as journals wheels in a drilling machines etc must be hardened to improve their wear resistance so another requirement is hardening okay hardening of these surfaces is required to improve resistance to wear okay the spindle bearings must also be selected or designed to retain the initial accuracy during the service life of the machine tool. Most important requirement, you need to remember this. Next important point that is fifth one is that requirement is deformation of the spindle due to heat transmitted to it by the bearings, cutting tool, workpiece, etc. should not be large as this has an adverse effect of, on the machining accuracy. So we can we uh, definitely know that because of heat generated when a machining operation is carried out, right? That is on a tip of a cutting tool and due to bearings, workpiece. So this is going to exert a deformation to the spindle. Why? Because spindle is going to hold all these devices, right? So this deformation should not be large, as this is going to have an adverse effect, as this will affect the machining accuracy. So, in case of spindles running at a high rotational speed, that is high mechanical power, particular care should be taken in selecting or designing the front bearings as it has a major source of heat transmitted to the spindle. So, again, the important criteria over here, the highlighted point in this is we need to select or design the front bearings as it is a major source of heat transmission. Okay, now, six point, last one. The spindle unit must have a fixture which provides quick and reliable centering and clamping of a cutting tool or a workpiece. Okay, so spindle unit should have a such fixture. For example, we can say uh, the fixtures for a compound slide, right? Similarly, the fixtures for our chuck, for holding a chuck. So it is one type of fixture which is going to clamp the workpiece or a cutting tool, right? Mandrills is again a one type of fixture. So these are going to support the workpiece. Now the centering is achieved by means of an external or internal tapper at the front end of the spindle. Okay, so this is the most important requirement that is must have fixtures which provides quick and reliable centering and clamping. 
So remember, this six important requirements. This has been asked in your exam. First is it requires a high degree of accuracy. Second important requirement is it should have a high static stiffness. Third one is it should have a high dynamic stiffness and damping. Okay. Fourth one, it is it has to provide a hardened ha hardening has to be done on a spindle surface, right, to improve what your resistance. Okay, and this is going to ultimately increase the service life. Okay. So next point, fifth important requirement is that selection or designing of a front end bearing is important. That is going to be a major source of heat transmission. Okay. So remember, heat transmission has to be reduced, which is going to be generated by operating a cutting tool and workpiece. And sixth important requirement is we need to provide fixtures, which provides a quick and reliable centering and clamping. That is for centering purpose. Okay, guys. So in today's session, we are going to keep it till here. We have discussed the functions. Of a spindle units and second what are the requirements of a spindle units in our next session we are going to start with the design procedure of a spindle unit spindle and spindle unit so till then stay tuned and thank you all